everybody, welcome to another episode of Techcano. My name is Petra and really appreciate you for being here live and direct. John Barker will be on very, very shortly. But before I do uh, do that, I just want to say hello to some people. Uh, I see uh, Jason is in the house. Great of you to uh, be here. I also, uh, MT is also in the house. Really appreciate that. <laughs> Jason says, my favorite people party. Oh, that's so great. I, have, it's, I hope that it's uh, most likely uh, because of John coming on the, the stage in, in just a few uh, m uh, minutes or two, uh, not so much anymore. Uh, by the way, he's also here indeed, Mr. Uh, uh, here to record or John Barker is in the house uh, in a few uh, minutes. Uh, my dad is also in the house. He will take care of you a little bit here and there. Uh, so uh, also wish him uh, all the best uh, there. Um, I see Kathleen is in the house, also known as your tech coach. Um, I see from Finland, uh, Vil is in the house. Kevin is also here. Oh, there are a lot of people here. There's so much that I, I, I it's, it's like already three pages only on uh, uh, people. It's great. Aaron is also in the house. That is fantastic. Um, I will, in the meantime, uh, just uh, do this because I have some, some questions to you. And I don't want to wait too long and bring on my special guest for today. And that is, put your hands together for John Barker. Welcome. And hello, you can hello. say something. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for having me here. I know, I know. I got, um, yeah, I, got, I went very quiet there for once. Yeah, well, that's, that's okay. Thank you so much for uh, being here. I really appreciate uh, you taking the time of your uh, Saturday evening uh, here. Um, yeah, let, let's just uh, first thank you for, uh, for taking the time. And then, of course, let's just d delve into... Um, you because people might not know you i cannot imagine but just for the sake of it who are you <laughs> that is a good first question uh, yeah i'm sure there's plenty of people who don't know me which is perfectly fine um but soon they hopefully will uh so i'm i'm john and uh i run a youtube channel called here to record you can see it the 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 spelling down below me there and the idea really on the channel well, it's been a lot of things over the years, but um, mostly it's focused on live video production and um, ATEM switchers, a lot of that kind of stuff, uh, live streaming devices. Uh, it's kind of a mixed bag of things. I used to do a lot of conference recording around Europe, so I did a lot of videos about bringing equipment on the road with me. These days, I don't do so much of that, but mostly I'm talking about software and, and things along those lines. So it's it's really, like I said, a mixed bag of content at the minute. Cool. Um, let, let's just uh, briefly talk about how how did you come into the video world of things? That is an excellent question. Um, I was thinking way back. Uh, I guess it started really whenever I was doing some stuff in school years and years ago it feels like a long time ago now but i became kind of the the known person to run a camera which meant that i recorded some little community plays and community productions and then from there i went on to do other bits and pieces but um, it was only really another five or ten years after that maybe five years later where i got back into uh, more event videography i had done a lot of videography in the meantime but the stuff that i do now which i really enjoy is that sort of live event or live production style stuff but it, it can really be traced back to being in school saying yes to grabbing the camera and recording maybe a, a football game that was happening or something along those lines and then um, next thing you know you own three cameras and you're running events on fridays and saturday nights that sounds very familiar, I have to tell you. <laughs> totally I'm not surprised. For me. <laughs> Excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let me see. I just wanted to make sure that people that are here watching, uh, please go ahead. If you have any questions for uh, John, please uh, write down a Q in front of the, 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 um, the question. Just Q and then the question, then I can see that here. Um, don't worry, if I don't see it, I'm sure that John will also pick it up a little bit. We try to do our best. It's quite uh, busy, which is great. So thank you very much for being here. Um, and again, uh, please let us know if you have any questions uh, for us. Um, so 
you you started here to record uh here to here to record.com uh just a few years back i believe or how long ago was that you know i'm losing track but probably like five or oh you know what actually the the youtube channel um the youtube channel yeah celebrated celebrated five years this year oh, and i think this company started oh thank you about six months before that so it was in within the five to six year mark at this point where i started here to record wow wow yeah that, mm -hmm. that that's uh, totally that's that's great but here to record that's mm -hmm. that's the youtube channel but also the company itself right so it's uh, like you said six months exactly and uh, exactly am i am i right that it was at the, at the, at the start solely uh, event productions Am I correct? That is correct, yes. So I worked for a company um, pretty close to where I, li I live in southern Sweden, and I worked yeah. for a company in Copenhagen, which is not too far away from each other, a short train ride. Um, and for them, I did lots of productions, video productions. And mm -hmm. so whenever I stopped working there, I just sort of slipped into video production myself, which was all live events. I took some, I brought some customers from them because they weren't doing it anymore. I got some more of my own. So at that point, in the early days, I was just doing, and eventually I ended up doing one conference every single month somewhere else in, in Europe, never really in Sweden, but always somewhere sort of abroad. So it became a lot of work. Wow. And, and if you look back at those five years ago, um, if you compare that to the, to the gear that we have these days, what do you think? It's 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 pretty ridiculous. Um, I made a video about a year ago now, which was uh, okay. It's gonna get I'm gonna get complicated now, but I made a video a year ago which compared the equipment that I had a year ago, which was the A10 Mini, original A10 Mini, with the equipment I had the previous year at the exact same event. And at the previous year, I had maybe like four times as much equipment because I had the ATEM television studio. I had a web presenter, or not web presenter, a HyperDeck recorder. I had all sorts of stuff that um, that I wasn't really using to their full potential because whenever I came a year later with the ATEM Mini, I was outputting the exact same stuff. Um, it was just that the, the equipment available at the time, you kind of had to shop for things that were more feature rich than you actually needed for these smaller gigs. Yeah. So whenever I started, I yeah, the first ATEM I got was actually the old HD 1ME uh, switcher, which was way, way, way too much more than I needed. I only used, you know, three inputs, maybe mm -hmm. four at the most, one or two outputs. So then there wasn't really good, like inexpensive starter options. And that's why I'm not surprised that there's so many ATEM minis being shipped constantly. It's 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 been quite a, a journey if, if you look at the A10 Mini, especially. Uh, I I know that at the, at the start uh, when we were testing out the lines, I actually showed you a picture back in 2019 that I actually went to the Black Magic booth at IBC in Amsterdam, and they had the A10 Mini, and and at that time I was like, oh, this is a game changer. And it actually yeah, has it been a game changer for a lot of people, I, I believe, uh, out there. Um, it's 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 absolutely uh, uh, unbelievable that that indeed uh, uh, like two years ago I had to bring in like like you know these 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 big fight cases like two or three of them to a big gig. Mm -hmm. Now it's just one uh, uh, fight case and then the eight M Mini Extreme, and that's basically it. And the only the only reason that I have that 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 uh, that that case still is that. For intercom with, with with some people that, that if you have multiple uh, cameramen, mm -hmm. uh, also your multi view and uh, also some SDI converters, just because uh, with HDMI you cannot have those long cables. And SDI, you, of course, you can. So yeah, I can totally imagine that that it's all shrinking yeah. and also making a lot of uh, possibilities there, uh, which is really cool. Um, yeah, it is. It's really cool. Uh, it's come a long way um, in the last few years, definitely. It's, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. I just wanted to, 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 to but, but, but now you, you're here, here to record, but then uh, a few months back, you, you, you just said, yeah, I'm going to stop with my day-to-day -day job. And I'm going to exactly. do something totally exactly. different. Exactly, it was, it was quite the, it was something I thought about for a while, but um, I wasn't sure if I definitely wanted to try and quit my job and, and do video production, uh, content creation, I guess is a better term, and then app development full time. 
Uh, that, that, that was about two months ago now, so I have no regrets at all. I'm basically spending every day either on Zoom talking to people about this stuff or I'm making videos or developing this stuff. So I have no regrets in any sense. But it did it did take a lot of thought and thinking and, I mean, saving over the last few years too just to make sure I was confident about what I was about to do. But uh, it it's it's been fun so far. And I, I find really really fast that it's it's really tough to manage your time whenever you're doing things that you actually really want to do all the time because I kind of just want to sit at the computer and just keep on working on this one project and, and I'm getting really deep into it instead of taking some breaks so all these kind of things I've learned a lot in the last uh, in the last few months definitely it's, it's a uh, phenomenon uh, I'm just uh, checking because before I want to go into the, the real you big deals, of course, the apps that you're working on. Before I do that, let's check if we have some uh, remarks or questions. Um, again, also some people still uh, that I forgot last time. Uh, Bill is all over at uh, Chicago. Cool of you to be here. MT is from uh, Hanover, Dublin, Ireland in the house. Um, let me see what we have here. Um, do, 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 do. I was just thinking, says Jonathan, let me just check. I was just thinking that how did you both compare the remote live streaming equipment used now to what you used when we you started? Yeah, I think that we both uh, talked about that uh, quite uh, there. And oh, yeah, <laughs> indeed, 750 subscribers that, that that happened last week, which is really, really cool. Nice, uh, nice, nice. That's, it, it, yeah, I didn't expect that to be honest. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. I saw that. Um, yeah, you were working your way towards it and mentioning it in a few previous live streams. So I'm happy to be here this week and uh, congratulate you. Nice work. Thank, nice you, work. thank you so much. And I, and I really, I don't, to be honest, I'm I'm actually so um, humble by by the subscribers because it's not because of the amount of people it's really the combination of course you you know because you have a youtube channel that once you reach a thousand subscribers and four thousand watch hours you well you graduate so to speak within youtube and then mm. you can actually really start a community and i really think mm -hmm. feel strongly about community hence that is the sole reason why i'm doing that because these 750 subscribers actually are also watching 3000 hours already so it's like <clears throat> mind boggling thank you so much yeah. guys really appreciate that i sorry for a kick uh, just briefly uh, going uh, to my uh, channel there uh, john it's really no, about, about you today let's talk about the meat let's talk about your apps and l let me introduce it a little bit from my perspective uh, so i am using vmix i have to admit that i'm using vmix so that means that a lot of uh, features that your software has basically is already in vmix built in however um and i talked about it to other people earlier on but let's just for, for the sake of people that are join joining now for the first time um Within the studio, it's vMix. It's for me the best the best way of working. Really easy to do, but I don't trust computers if it comes to events. Hence, going to events, it's the A10 Mini line with the Hyper Deck with the whole shebang that we just uh, discussed, uh, and then then really the the, the tools uh, set of uh, John comes into play. Um, can we just go through uh, your your tools and just uh, talk about that? Um, I want to stop with the H2R graphics because I think that is the, the main the main topic. Eh? I think that everybody is really interested in it. But you have more mm. more than that. You also have a super source uh, application, I believe, and also a graph. Did, did they say correct? Um, I forgot the name, but where yeah, you like diagramming. Talk, the diagramming, yes. Exactly. Um, yeah, which, yeah. One, which one do you want to start with, uh, John? Well, I think SuperSource is a good place to start because it's probably the least complex of the other of all three. Mm -hmm. um, so the idea behind H2R uh, SuperSource layouts, which is a real mouthful to say, um, was that if you're an ATEM user and specifically an ATEM Mini Extreme or the um, some of the bigger, more expensive ATEMs with the SuperSource feature built in. If you're if you're someone who's used that before, which I have had uh, some experience with before I got the ATEM Mini Extreme, you'll find that jumping into the ATEM software control, which is where you usually configure all the SuperSource uh, layouts and stuff, mm. is 
it's a real pain to be honest uh, it's a lots of little dials that don't necessarily reflect what you're doing on screen and I've never really enjoyed the experience and then leading up to the HM Mini Extreme uh, release I realized that it's the perfect time to try and build something that might be an easier way to do that uh, so I can show the I can show the website here that on the um, cool. yeah let's go on the stream where so you can see that now I'm sure and um, so there's it's just at layouts.heretorecord.com and uh, what it lets you do is basically grab your um, your boxes here and just reposition them and again if you've used the uh, the ATEM software control to do this you'll know that there is no click and drag interface to do exactly. this kind of stuff so it, it takes you almost no time to do a side-by-side -side look in this interface versus how long it would take you to do that exact same thing in the ATEM software control um, and from there it, it's it's nothing too much more complicated than turning on all the boxes changing the sizes the sources and what it spits out for you is this macro that you can rename and uh, and stuff but ideally you copy it and paste it into the XML document that um, that you can export from the ATEM and if you've run macros and, and did that kind of stuff already in the past then you'll know how that works and where that fits in but from there it's a much faster way to get the look that you wanted and of course you can just tweak it in the um, in the ATEM software control once you've lo loaded it in but really the the benefit in in this circumstance is just getting it done faster in a more user friendly interface I think so that's like the that's the whole product in in a sense there where uh, it's one page and um, it's not much more complicated than that one thing I did do was kind of take a step further than that because I realized that people might not even want to bother using the tool so I did have one more thing to show on that page where you can actually head into the buy the big pack of layouts which takes you to your little store and what I've done is created like a hundred and I think it's 117 different layouts and you get a PDF which shows all of the layouts and you also get XML files of every single layout too so you can just say you know what I like this one which is um, pointing at one over here at the bottom which is three side by side and in the PDF there's a there's a a little code that tells you which XML to open and then from there you can just load that macro into your switcher so another step to not even bother having to uh, build the stuff yourself so that's kind of a quick look at the super source layouts tool I have some plans in the future but right now I'm too busy working on the other apps that we'll talk about to yeah, really we, we add will. more features yeah we, we definitely mm -hmm. will mm -hmm. but um, what I like about that tool was that when I started to well the, the extreme uh, was the first one that actually I got to know the superstars. I was like, you only have like four different uh, presets and you cannot even really change it unless you create a macro. And I was like, okay, I did and eventually understand what I needed to do. Actually, I also did some animation. I, uh, that's something that I would love, love, love if, if that would be possible as well. I, I've seen it that is possible, mm. but, um, but uh, what I love is yeah. the, the, the ease of just changing your your uh, layouts with that is such it's so easy that it's mind-boggling to be honest and and indeed just copy pasting right. it and that's it that's 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 really a, a fantastic way of, of helping out to, with, with people um how how did you come across to do that what 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 was the inspiration and how much time does it take to make this kind of software package that's a good that's a really good question actually the idea I have no idea I think I was just I was I was I, I hadn't gotten the ATEM Mini Extreme yet but I had the experience with the previous ATEMs uh, so I was sort of in that gap where I knew I was going to get it because I had ordered one yeah. uh, it was somewhere around that timeline anyway and I knew I was going to get one so I just thought well wouldn't it be great by the time I get that in my hands that I could have a tool to use that in fact I had to log into an old ATEM 2ME or whatever it was to get the code from there just so I could see if if I could build this tool before I got it this yeah. is the fastest I think I've ever went from idea to creation I think it was about two weeks from idea to uh, I made and then I made a live stream launch of the app and the, the big pack two to three weeks I think I was roughly that's the fastest I've ever built something and um, it 
I mean, I think it was only just about working within a within a few days of that launch. I basically decided if I can fix this last piece, I'll do the live stream on the Monday. And I think I only fixed that in the end of the previous week. So wow. it was a, like a tight deadline for no reason. I was putting that on myself. But um, but I knew that with the ATEM and the Extreme coming out, it was the perfect time to try and do it. So I was just running for it. Yeah. Now, I, I think that 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 uh, that super source definitely is 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 one of the key features of the, of the extreme. Uh, so I think that that you that, that this is definitely a golden uh, uh, opportunity for everybody to to use that. So super source within two weeks. How? <laughs> no, don't, you don't have to tell me. <laughs> How much coffee do you drink? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, way too much, way too much. That's for sure. <laughs> exactly. Okay, but the, the, so that's so, so that's the first one. The, that's the uh, super source. Uh, let's uh, talk about the next one. Uh, that that would be um, the 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 graph. I, I, I to our gear. Graph. Sorry, the gear. That's the one. Yes. Gear. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So all all of the applications start with H two R for here to record. Yeah. Um, I'm just kind of going with that. I'm going to stick with it. If I could go back in time and change it, maybe I would. But for now, it's sticking. So I'm just going to keep on, just keep on heading with it. But Hitch to our gear is a very different step in a very different direction. Um, the idea behind this is being able, and I can just show you that as well while we talk about it. But um, being able to plan your productions in terms of equipment and stuff you need. So uh, there's a little video here on the homepage. But um, in fact, I'll come back to that later. So with the help of lots of pieces of equipment, you or you can build the equipment, um, you can create pack lists and stuff like that. And what it lets you do is, in fact, I'm just logged in here. I have this little gear plan um, where I have an ATEM 2ME Production Studio 4K, for example. Mm -hmm. All of its inputs are here on the top. So it has uh, 20 SDI inputs and then a few other things. And all of the outputs are on the bottom. I've kind of structured the application in that in that way so i have this piece of equipment here um on my gear plan and then attached to that i have these uh these seven cameras which are all uh looking like that mm -hmm. i can just remove this cable actually so what you do is you add pieces of equipment you draw cables between those pieces of equipment and from there you can generate well actually it automatically generates this packing list for you so it has the atem that I put in there, all the cameras and all the cables that I've um, that I've added as well. So, what I, I this is an application that I wanted badly whenever I was doing this stuff, but I could never find a good way. I used to make these plans on pen and paper, and it was never really good enough. So, I ended up just trying to make one myself. And um, one of the things that kind of <clears throat> excuse me, one of the things that I was always really keen on was getting some way of having as much equipment in there as possible. Mm -hmm. And what you'll see here on the on the landing pages, I've mentioned this community library. So anyone who has an account can go in to the um, to the to the builder here and uh, create any device that you might think is missing. So like the ATEM Mini Pro, it's definitely not missing. There's loads of those in there. But um, you get a little preview of it and you can say, okay, I know it has one, two, three, four HDMI inputs and uh, two HDMI outputs and so on and so, so forth. And you create this item and then you can make that a public uh, item. And from there, anyone can get these community items and add them to their gear plans. So it really, the backbone is that, um, that community support behind it so that whenever you go into these plans here and you add a piece of equipment, you're able to search through for example, ATEM Mini Pro. And like I said, there are plenty of those in there right now. So what you'll see is a whole range of different ATEM Mini Pros that people have added. Now, something I'm working on a lot in the background is approving or uh, sort of rejecting, so to speak, whenever there's lots of duplicates. Um, you can see here I'm a little bit behind on that, but it's something I'm working on actively for sure. And then you can grab one that you like the look of. This one has HDMI inputs and outputs that I like, so I can add that to my plan. And now I have it here, and I can connect that up to um, another piece of equipment. One thing I've really wanted to make sure is that you can't connect things to things that don't connect. So, for mm -hmm. example, HDMI doesn't connect to SDI without a converter. So it won't let me do that. Um, by default, I would have to add some sort of converter in there. Otherwise, I'll get to my gig and I'll realize I forgot something. So that's kind of a 
a really quick look at H2R gear. There's loads of features I've been adding recently. The, la the latest one is that um, all these cables are actually drawn automatically. You can see as I move this piece of equipment around, uh -huh. the cables are coming with it, which is kind of a, a cleaner way to do it than a lot of other tools because you have to redraw all these cables whenever you want to make a change. Yeah. But so for my case, it's all happening automatically. But what that does mean is some weird cables don't quite go the way you want them to. So I can add what I call uh, little cable pins, which lets me just be a little bit more uh, careful about where cables go so that I don't have so much overlapping. So that's just one more little feature that I've just added. I think it was last week actually added that. That that's awesome. That's I actually have I have a few questions about it. Uh, first, sure. the first thing that that comes to mind is that a I love it. <laughs> that's definitely the case. I also love that it that it creates that pick list. Um, you j just also mentioned that it actually is also smart that it knows that it's an HDMI cable or an SDI cable. Um, but what it probably doesn't know uh, is how long that it can be at the moment. Or is, or is it? The cables. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I didn't show you that, actually, which is oh, a very good it point. it does. So if I remove this, oh, whoops, if I remove this cable over here, this SDI cable, I'm holding down Alt on my keyboard and drawing the cable again. And now I have a little label, so I can say, I know that this is cable number one, two, two. Sometimes you have a cable system. And then I can set a, a length in here to say, well, this cable is five meters or 10 meters. Or you can also change this, it's just text. So you could change this to like uh, five feet, I guess. But in my case, five meter cable. And if I click done on that and jump into my pack list again, I now have my six SDI cables and then one more SDI cable, which is five meters. So it pulls those all together into lengths um, as well. So it does do that, but it's a, it's sort of a hidden feature only because I'm slowly working my way towards um, lots of educational content about this stuff. So I'm sort of trying to get those features out there so people can actually use them. Okay, that, that sounds great. Now, I, I was just mm -hmm. about to, to think about that indeed. Uh, um, Ben, I, I just wanted to, to just point out very quickly uh, that my audio is a little bit lower. That's because otherwise you will hear the fan here. That is the reason. Uh, but I did uh, add, add a little bit more uh, on my end just to make sure that you can hear me. Thank you for that. Um, another thing that, um, yeah, so so Kevin was also ta talking about, uh, does it have uh, different brands uh, of and types of uh, equipment? I think that, uh, John, you really said uh, that, that you can actually put in your own even so if it's not there you can put in your own and you can um, you can actually you can actually take other people's gear and change that to be the way you want it right now I have just to put it into context I have 450 gear items that I have not yet went through so that's just the ones I haven't yet rejected or approved so there is a lot of stuff in there um, it's worth typing in. The, the current implementation is you have to be very specific about what you're typing, but I'm working on that too to make it a little bit more dynamic in terms of search and stuff. But really, if it doesn't have whatever you need, then it will have that because you will be nice enough to add it. And even today, just before we, you and I did our test earlier, I was adding another new feature that lets you even more on the plan page, you can even more customize whatever gear item um, you can find. So it's it's getting better and better all the time. Wow, that's that's awesome. Um, <laughs> on TV channels, uh, it's really interesting listening to you uh, regards uh, oh, uh, regards swear uh, lights to ATEM. I don't know what they what he's talking about, but it's in, indeed uh, that we are definitely oh, software. also in regards software type. Ah, uh, software. Ah, oh, okay, yeah. It's easy to get caught up in uh, software solutions. Yeah, that's definitely the case. I am. Yeah. In all fairness, uh, I try to avoid software unless it's for over overlays. So that is uh, the way that I think about it. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I do too, actually, for the most part. Um, yeah, it's I, I do tend to stick with hardware as much as I can, but sometimes it just makes sense to bring a piece of software, especially like something like vMix. I've used that hundreds of times on productions, and what it can do, as long as you know the requirements of your system or the limitations of your system then you can get really far with software for many many things so it's it's kind of a it's a tough battle but um but hardware has has not let me down as much as software that's for sure 
definitely. That that's definitely the case, indeed. Um, let me check. Uh, Graham, um, it records being able to. Uh, annotate a cable to sh uh, show its length would be good <laughs> now well that that's done doable that's there yeah i think graham just said that right before you asked so, seriously uh, and, oh and even yeah i think so okay cool okay yeah and indeed i, I just changed my audio so that's great um cool. and uh, kevin was still using vectorworks but this is amazing and he's of course talking then about uh, the gear h2r gear Go get it. <laughs> Great. Yeah, and, and it's definitely com. also one that I, I will definitely uh, use in the future as well. I, I'm actually a, a, a user on that uh, platform as well. So awesome. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. OK. Um, is there anything else that I'm forgetting before we go into the big one, the H2R graphics? <laughs> I don't think uh, so. Huh? I'm trying to think of other applications. No, I think I think that's I think that's the main the main two at the minute. Uh, definitely, in, I'm working mostly on gear and graphics at the minute because those are my two most active current applications uh, for sure. So, but I think that's it. Yeah. Okay, so shall we stop and have a volume two next week? No, just kidding. <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah. See ya. <laughs> No, I, I'll, I'll let, let's talk about the H2R graphics. I, I think that this is uh, a fantastic piece of software. I use it, uh, like I like I said earlier on in the, the show as well, especially in connection with my ATEM. Um, love it. Actually, uh, to be honest, I also use it for the 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 the, the lower thirds where you have all those circles as well. I didn't do that today, but I definitely could have done that. Because I love oh, yeah, that the crowd, I call the it. crowd, the crowd indeed. Yeah, uh, that's at such an amazing uh, feature because you actually see that people are are reacting and you see yourself and that's really cool to, for for you guys as well. Again, we're also doing it. I'm I'm doing it for you as as as, as a community and I'm sure that uh, John exactly has the same uh, same idea about it. We're actually all in it uh, together to make it our lives better but also having a great community that's the that's basically why we're here so um it's our graphics i am i am so mm. excited uh, about that product um but i'm gonna i'm gonna make it a little bit more difficult for you i know okay. that yeah. something is going to change so maybe you something because, is going to change yeah yeah so yeah. Me, so it, go ahead yeah, go on no 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 go ahead <laughs> No, what I was going to say was, at the minute, H2R Graphics, it's, it's been a few years now that I've been developing it and adding features and all that kind of stuff. And it's come a long way, definitely. But it literally, the application itself literally started because I had a job where I wanted to have graphics and I knew I could build something to make those graphics happen. A, a control application and then an output application, or a control window and then an output window and I can throw any graphics on top of a live stream that I wanted. So that that's that was the idea. Some things existed before that, but they were all very expensive options. I mean, they still kind of are, but um, they were all very expensive options. And and I just wanted some simple stuff. So it started like that. And then basically the application for the last few years is built on top of that. I've added live chat, the crowd feature, like you mentioned before. Um, in fact, here's the... Um, let me just bring up the website here. I think I had it somewhere there. Yeah, there it is. Uh, the It has lower thirds and timers and all that stuff, but I added the YouTube chat not that long ago, some scoring options. You can draw on the screen, which is a pretty fun new-ish feature. And then the, the little crowd uh, faces that you mentioned be from before. So you could actually see anybody who left a comment during your stream, it will pop into this certain list and then you can show them on your um, on your live stream, which I really like. In, fa in fact, the more people that comment, the higher up the list gets, and it kind of starts to cover up your face, which ends up being quite funny as time goes on. Yeah. So that that's that's where we're at right now. But since maybe December the, uh, last year, and for the most part of this year, I've been working on version two, so like a complete rework of the whole application. Not only is it a rework of the application and a rebuild te technically speaking but it's also a rethink in terms of the operation of graphics now 
all of this is to say that I'm not quite ready to show the UI yet. <sighs> but I, if you'll have me back on again, whenever the time comes, I will definitely show you the UI for sure. Uh, OK, um, that, that's a deal. We, we, as, so, as soon as a, you launch yeah, it, let's do it. Yeah, precisely. We'll definitely do that. And um, I'm hoping that it's not too long before that happens. But the only reason not to show the UI yet is just because I'm constantly, I literally made changes yesterday that made it look different from the day before. So um, I'm just getting ready to, 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 to do that. But what I will, will say is there's loads of different features coming into it and new ways of thinking. And one of the main features I've been asked over, over the years is, wouldn't it be cool if you could just bring this into OBS or vMix via a URL? And that is something that's already available now. So if I, we're connected via vMix today. Yes, we are. Um, and then I've overlaid a browser source on this, this uh, feed that I'm sending you. Yeah. And if I show this comment here, you can see uh, my comment pop up. So this is this is running out of this is the output from Hitch to our graphics uh, version two. So that's you know that's the sneak peek that you're seeing right there. In <sighs> fact, if I cut to um, let me just take that off air just for one second. Yeah. But if I cut to my other computer screen here, you can see there that I have my browser window uh, displaying the exact same thing as you just saw there. Yes. So it's it's just a URL and it's just showing all of the graphics. And if I press on another graphic uh, just off screen here, you can see another one pop up. So yeah. it's kind of fixing, in a sense, one of the many things that people have asked for over the years. Um, so that means that everything's network based now. You have sort of a control brains application running on, uh, on one computer. And then you're able to jump on other computers. And what I'm going to grab here is my iPad. Uh, yeah. And again, I'm not ready to show the UI much uh, more than what you're seeing here. Yeah. But a little sneak peek. But I have all my social messages coming in on the screen. And then I can throw up a message like that by tapping on, on the screen here, like this one from Jason saying, question, does Don, John use the DaVinci Speed Editor? Absolutely, I do. Since I bought it, I've used it for every video I have edited. And oh, then yeah, I can, we need um, to talk. <laughs> We can definitely talk about that, definitely. Yeah. But um, from the from the iPad here, connected to the same network, I can throw stuff up on the screen, and um, and it all works kind of the way I always wanted it to, but never really got around to making it work. So that's like a little sneak peek into where it's headed. Yeah. Um, but in terms of features, what I want to add or what I want to port over to this one is many of the same features as the old version because I don't really want to lose out on all those great graphics that I once had and if people upgrade which I really want them to change to this new version then it would be a shame to take away any of the big features that people tend to use a lot I, I mean um, I have to be careful uh, because uh, before the show you did show me a bit of a sneak peek and you did tell me that it might mm -hmm. change a little mm -hmm. bit but I can tell you it is definitely different in a, in a very positive way and uh, I cannot wait to, uh, to see what you come up with um, and I, I, I did it. I got a sneak peek in my show, so that's great. You did, you did. <laughs> that was a very sneaky sneak peek. Definitely, that's great. I see Aaron has a very uh, short uh, question. Uh, by the way, I just uh, published an update on my Chrome chat plugin to work as a browser of a now too. So yeah, I no, love, I love yeah, everyone's sort of running towards running towards browser overlays, which is great. It, it, it's the way I wanted it to be for the longest time. And I'm sure Arn has wanted his to be even more um, accessible for the longest time too. So uh, it, it makes perfect sense to head in that direction. And you can just bring it into a browser as an overlay. In fact, one of the really great benefits, not only here in vMix that I can bring that browser overlay and have really clean graphics because it's not actually keying anything. No. The, the background is completely transparent, but what I've done in, in my live stream last uh, on Monday past was I used vMix to output key fill graphics uh, over oh. the deck link card that I have attached. So I was getting two HDMIs into my ATEM Mini and doing key fill graphics from that, which was much cleaner than the, the previous uh, Chroma or Luma keying that I was doing. So you, there's loads of benefits from getting it into a um, browser window instead. I am actually thinking of going all the way to uh, here to record uh, uh, graphics once that becomes available for Phoenix. That looks fantastic. I am 
I am so in love with it, and I also see a lot of people that are really interested in it as well. Eh? Definitely going to check it out. Uh, um, it says uh, uh, Grim Skull, which is uh, fantastic. Uh, Kevin says you need this. Uh, I think that we all need this, so uh, we cannot wait for you to uh, be ready with it. But of course, I don't want to hurry you. Take your time. Make it <laughs> make it uh, the way that you like uh, it to do. That that it's great. Definitely. Uh, but um, I think that we need to move to an, a, a topic that I didn't prepare, uh, but it sounds yeah. like uh, people are interested in it. So let's talk about the speed editor uh, as, a, as, as one of the, 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 the topics. Um, I'm using the speed editor. Actually, I started uh, using it for about three weeks ago. Uh, so I'm still in the learning curve, but I am blown away about how fast it can be. Yeah. Um, so that, that's my perspective, but uh, you said just a minute ago that you're actually really using it. So uh, how do you think Definitely. about yeah. it? Whenever I saw the, um, whenever I saw the, 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 the predecessor of the speed editor, which was the, the keyboard version with, a, with some controls, um, I, I, I looked at the price tag at the time and the benefits and I just thought that wasn't really for me. But mm. when I saw the speed editor, I thought that would be totally worth giving a sh shot. And when I got it, the first video I just happened to have on my plate at the time was something I shot in multicam. So for that, it was really great. I really enjoyed it. It took me a little bit of time just to get the hang of it a little bit. But since then, I haven't done much multicam stuff, mostly just um, editing my own A-roll, B-roll kind of videos. And I'll tell you, the, the, the dial, I'm losing the term now, but the, the dial alone, just flying through the timeline, is such a time saver in many cases and the couple of buttons that i tend to use like um well the undo button <laughs> i use that a lot <laughs> split and moving things around and um, just having that in front of me gets me so so much further in the um in the editing than i thought before so it's really intuitive and really helpful to use it feels like an advert for it now but it's i've really enjoyed using it and it is hard to go back to keyboard and mouse after the speed improvements of using that i find so far yeah, and I want to add to that is that, um, in all fairness, here I have to tell you, I used to love uh, editing. Then I had some 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 work that I needed to do a couple of years ago, like 10 years ago or something, that it was such, such a lot of stress to get things uh, edited in a very short time, every single, uh, like every week or every day, that I really... Mm -hmm really hated editing for a long, long time until I got the speed editor. And then it's like, <gasps> yes, now I am starting to like it again because it's fast. It is, it's it's working very easy. And um, I, I am actually going to still have two videos uh, uh, coming out uh, shortly about the speed editor. One is indeed what you just did about the, the ISO recording on the ATAP Mini. And the second will be just editing a vlog style video or a, a, a on-demand one. And actually, uh, come to think of it, if you look below, you see a ticker and you can actually uh, vote what will be the next video on the uh, next week. So is it either the, um, the ultimate extreme uh, machine that will be then, then you have to fill, fill in uh, uh, 10 um, uh, minus sign A, or B it was different. <laughs> it's coming now. It's coming now. So um, <laughs> I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting yeah. for it. Okay, 10A is uh, using the speed editor for eight and mini ISO recordings. So that's 10A, and for 10B, my ultimate extreme setup. Uh, oh, you know, I'm gonna go. F I, I had written 10A there, but I instantly changed it to 10B. I was, I, was I was afraid of that. I was afraid of that. I have a feeling I know something, and I'm just gonna stop there. But I'm up for 10B. You see, you see the picture already. <laughs> <laughs> it's all yep. about secrets, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, let me check. Uh, if the, so, so yeah. Please for fill in ten B or ten A. What you want to want to see? Uh, yeah, I think that this is related. Huh? So, uh, so you are a cut page person. Uh, no, no, actually, um, I thought I would be. I definitely thought I would be because I used to use Final Cut a lot 
and when I saw the cut page I felt like the two were quite similar and the workflow style seemed to work for me but having used the cut page a little bit I don't use it at all anymore I use the edit page for everything and the speed editor works great on that too so I actually every time I open the cut page and I try to start something I instantly leave it and go back into the edit page and do everything in there so I didn't think I would have that answer but it just with the speed editor and with the way I'm editing things now it just makes more sense to me to head into the edit page uh, okay I didn't uh, indeed expect that that answer uh, I would say that I'm definitely a, a cut page but that's also because um, I am okay with the uh, jump cut se uh, selection so to speak uh, does it, I do want to make it as, as professional as possible, though I also don't have a lot of time. Unlike you, John, I, I still have my day-to-day -day job, so I do need to have some uh, <laughs> time. Is a, it's a big problem for me. You can always but, quit. Yeah, you can always quit. Yeah, not now. <laughs> <laughs> so true, so true. Someday. Uh, Aaron actually says uh, that he needs a 10-minute tutorial on the speed editor because mm. I tried it a couple of times and haven't figured out how efficient, efficiently to use it. Definitely with the cut page, uh, Aaron. But uh, I will uh, yeah, wait for it for, for a few weeks, one or two weeks, so you will have the first video coming your way for, for sure. Um, yeah, that would be really helpful. I watched, I watched a video, a short video on how to use it before I started using it too because... I can't remember what one I watched, but just to get a couple of the basics down because it is different enough that you you kind of ought to learn it. And if you can learn what all the buttons do, it will help you whenever you keep using it. So it's totally worth a quick tutorial. I whenever I whenever it came out, <clears throat> excuse me, whenever it came out, I was thinking about making a video about it specifically, but I never really felt like I was a proficient enough editor to actually make a video about it. In my case, I just kind of you know, sort of smash through the edits and then export and I never really look back. So I don't really feel like I'm skilled enough to make a video about it, but I'm looking forward to seeing what your video comes out about it, Petra. Uh, I, I cannot wait myself. So so I don't say I, I don't see myself also as, as a professional editor. Like I said, I used to hate it. Uh, but I do think what, what I like about uh, it is that um, it, it becomes muscle memory. And once that uh, when it, once it becomes muscle memory, you're flying with that uh, with that tool for sure. So uh, yeah. definitely one, yeah. Does it only work with uh, Resolve? That's a question uh, that uh, Jimbo uh, asks, and unfortunately, that is the case. It will only work with Resolve. Now, I don't know if it's still the case, but if you now purchase DaVinci Resolve Studio, you get the speed editor for free. That's something that is really interesting. <laughs> I was that something. Is true. Or is it the opposite though? No, is no, it, it, you, no, it's it, not. You get the speed editor. You get no. Oh, okay. No, it's it's the other way around. If you if you if you purchase oh, DaVinci Resolve uh, Studio, which is the paid version of DaVinci, yeah. Get, so you pay two hundred eighty euros or something like that, and then you get for free the speed editor. So that that's that that's makes fun. perfect sense for me. <laughs> that's like a no brainer. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I did the same. I, I now that I think about it, that's exactly what I did. I got both at the same time, which made sense. Okay. Um, a, a short uh, intermezzo here. Uh, I see that you want me to do 10B. All right. I see uh, yep. Jonas yep. also saying 10B. Vil says 10A. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. Oof. Oh. Uh, so and Blake says uh, this is all new. So 10A. And then 10B. Ooh, so it's 50-50 yeah. now. Uh, so, oh, <laughs> like Graham's, Graham's is also answer. 10A and 10B. Still 50-50. Graham's saying just just do them both at the same time. That's what I'm hearing from Graham. <laughs> just do them both. <laughs> yeah, because you have all the time in the world. Let's do it. <laughs> 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 so to, totally, totally understood. Uh, does this still handle... Uh, hand, Handle multiple 10B, 10B, 10B. Um, 10B was the was the <laughs> ultimate extreme. Uh, it does handle more than one, definitely. I'm not going to tell you anything nice. else at the moment. It's like it's really uh, it's it, it's like it's like mind boggling. You've seen the picture. It's and I just got it working. It's yeah, like really cool. it's like amazingly cool. 
Um, it's actually built with Aaron is still here, so let's let's. I'm gonna go to my my, my picture just for a quick uh, for small sure, bits, just uh, just to get the uh, products. So let's go to my. There we go. So it is just about see me on the screen there. Yeah. So it is related to this product by um, Aaron Parecki. Go get it, P PK1 Extreme. That is the that is the name of this uh, ATEM Mini Extreme stand that he produced. It has the stream deck area as well, and it has all kinds of things on top of it. And we're going to talk about that, what those are. And unfortunately, I cannot show you anything else due to the fact that otherwise it will not be fun, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You can't give it all away now. Nah, that that wouldn't that wouldn't that's not fun. That's no fun. Uh, okay, so speed editor uh training video from Darren uh, Martin Martil is also one that, that you can do. Yeah. Uh John, you should still make a video about it. I would watch it. <laughs> He's talking about the speed editor. He is, he is. I think I think if I get my hands on it. I was thinking about getting the ATEM, not getting, but uh, borrowing an ATEM Mini Extreme ISO. And I think it would be nice to try and loop those two together into some sort of video. So maybe I can make something. Um, just a standalone video about the speed editor terrifies me in some sense. But um, but a, a together sort of thing would probably work really well. Yeah, definitely. Um, bloop, um, what's this? I've seen at a distributor take the opposite, buy a speed editor and take the study for free. That's not yeah. what I did. But uh, if that is uh, possible, then did. why not? <laughs> exactly. No matter <laughs> how you okay. word it, you're getting the same thing. So yeah, no exactly, it doesn't matter. Uh, check out the the, uh, the BM form uh, for the running uh, commentary mm -hmm. on Bluetooth problems with speed editor. A red line in the cable. Yeah, I've seen that too. Uh, however, I have not seen any issues with it whatsoever until now. So, but I'm also not running it on a Mac, but on a Windows uh, laptop. So there might be some reason for that. But that is the speed yeah. editor, and I, I yeah, I love it. And it seems to be that you are also uh, working on it as well. Um, I am starting to wrap up. So, guys, if you have one final question for uh, John, please, uh, I'll give you some time to uh, to write them down. Uh, and I will tell you in a, in a minute just about something else. So I will go to my screen just for a bit. Um, so this, this month will be a little bit different if it comes to me being online on Saturday, because next week I'm getting old. I am getting my birthday so next week on saturday i am having a, a small small party so i will not be in the studio uh so probably no video there so that's the reason why i'm just, just saying there's no video uh next the week after i will get my second jab of pfizer so i don't know how i'll make it uh i never know um but that's the reason why i have two weeks off but then after that i will come back and I will be uh, giving you guys a tour of my studio. Now, you, of course, you've seen uh, the studio a little bit here, but I'm not talking about this as a tour. No, I'm talking about the real tour, Li literally going through the whole uh, Taekwondo studios to uh, talk about what's going on here as well. So that is what you can expect. So next week and the week after, no show, but two premieres. One premiere will be... Uh, seems to be 10b at the moment so so we will be talking about the ultimate extreme uh setup first and then the second one will be about the speed editor and that will be on the 17th as a premiere video so you will still have at the same time content but not yeah not 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 live so that's that's the way it goes uh live stream the party um I have to think about that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know if I'm going to do that. So um, going back to John, uh, I don't see any uh, questions uh, coming in anymore. So uh, I would love 
to thank you, John, for taking the time uh, for being here live. Uh, I wish you all the luck. I forgot one thing. You're a freelancer, oh. right? So where can they mm -hmm. uh, contact you if, if they have any uh, questions or uh, that kind of stuff? Where, where can they find you? Good question. Here to record.com is a perfect way, but even better is um, if you go onto any of my videos on the channel, underneath that video is a link to the Discord server. I'm here to record Discord server, which has many familiar faces that you might see around here. Petra's in there, Aaron's in there, and lots of other folks who make this kind of content and talk about this fun stuff. So if you want to find me anywhere, that's the perfect place. You can send me a message through one of the channels, or you can just send me a DM in there, um, and that's the the direct way. I'm, I spend more time on that than I do most other services these days. So, head for that. And I want to say happy birthday in advance for next week. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to do that. Come on, it's okay. Hey, but uh, th thank you first. so. Sorry again. I wanted to be first. <laughs> oh yes, you are first, definitely. Um, thank you so much and uh, go uh, go to his uh, channel i actually added uh, both the the youtube channel and here to record as part of the commentary uh, on the youtube uh, 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 page uh, please uh, go ahead and, and go to to him and also subscribe to him because he is really awesome and i, I really like him for that so thank you so much um oh good question what earpiece are you using you know, I just saw that. I just saw that question, and I was trying to get the answer. It's a me. It's a me audio, um, but I've, I'm misremembering the brand or the the specific uh, the specific one. It was like an M two or something. I'm not entirely sure. Let me get a link, and I can put it in the chat here. But uh, something along those lines. Wait a second. Is this not the same? Me audio something. That's a, that one looks a bit smaller than the one I have, but it uh, might be the same one, just in a smaller case. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're also using. I'm also using in ears, by the way. If you see that, so uh, that, that that's really the, the only it's way the of me you know, audio M six that I'm using. Me audio M six as a Mary. Correct. Nice as in Mary. Thanks. Yeah, they're pretty Let good. Let me check if there are any last questions. I didn't see anything. Uh, people are talking about their shots as well. Yeah, that's the way it goes these days. Uh, I hope that everybody is doing fine and be be careful. Uh, we're almost, we're nearly at the end. I hope. So let's, uh, um, yeah, wait for that. John, thank you so much for your time and effort for being here. I do want uh, to hook you up for uh, coming back to to me uh, when uh, H2R Graphics is out. I really want to go fully in depth uh, in that episode. So can can we agree upon that? Definitely. Thank you. We so can much. definitely agree upon that for sure. Nice. Thanks so much, guys. See you around. See you in uh, not one, not two, but three weeks. Bye bye.